Welcome back, Chris from the Mighty Decibel here. This episode, we're going to be doing uh, double live album reviews from the 2020s. So I'm sure some of you out there are going, are they, are they still making those things, double live albums? And uh, for sure they are. I got four albums to cover here, and uh, they're across multiple uh, sub-genres, uh, and uh, they're a good representation of what's, uh, what's available out there. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, Eaten Alive by Nashville Pussy. Uh, so this Nashville, Tennessee unit has been in action now for 24 years, eight studio albums to their name, uh, but they've really made their, their name uh, through hard touring, uh, high energy live band. I've, I've seen them live a couple of times, the last time in a smallish bar, and wow, they just blew my head off. Uh, you should check them out when they come to town. Um, so when I heard that there is a double live album coming out, uh, I pre-ordered this thing even before uh, it hit uh, uh, it hit the airways because I you know I knew it was going to be a safe bet here. Uh, so from a packaging perspective, if you look here, uh, yeah, perfect uh, you know uh, band shot on the front, and then you got uh, drink in hand post gig uh, shot of the band, and then in the middle you got a picture of Reuter sus uh, personally I would have preferred you know on uh, a number of different uh, um, uh, pictures instead of a single but still good and the other thing I thought was neat is that uh, the albums uh, the vinyls themselves each have a unique picture of each band member on each of the four sides which was a very cool idea I wish they'd seen uh, more of that so here you see uh, in this side drummer Ben and bassist Bonnie, uh, and then the other two sides have uh, have uh, Reuter Suss and uh, the lead uh, uh, guitarist and um, and singer. So anyway, um, so you put the uh, needle to the vinyl here, and uh, side one, um, all fears of this not being a good album are put to rest immediately. They kick off, unbelievably, uh, with a cover of ACDC's Up To My Neck. <laughs> so <laughs> energy levels are way high right off the bat. Uh, and the whole side is is almost perfect uh, Nashville pussy stuff. Uh, catchy, sexually deviant rock and roll with energy levels uh, hitting the red line. Side two, um, I would have to say, is the weakest of the four. Um, in this one, a little more sedate than the other three, um, relying a little too heavily on the hard rock tracks, uh, tracks rather than on the high oxygen rock and roll ones. Uh, still good, but uh, to me, I see a little bit of a letdown there. Side three proves to be even better than side one, though, um, as uh, guitarist uh, Sus becomes even more unrestrained, letting your guitar ring loud and true here. Um, it opens with the highlight track of the whole package, an extended version of Low Down Dirty Pig. Uh, starts with a, a drum solo, a short one, band introduction, and then concludes with a uh, rock out with your cock out guitar solo. Well, ironic in this case, <laughs> from writer Sus, uh, who really is Angus Young reincarnated as a blonde maned uh, female. Uh, she remains unchained the rest of the two sides here. Uh, excellence and execution. Uh, not surprisingly, the fun continues on side four. Uh, the band brings uh, things to fever pitch, uh, pitch by concluding with the best track of their career to date. That being, of course, Go Motherfucker Go. Uh, punk and roll track that just crushes. Love that. Uh, love that track. Uh, with, and in, with an extended guitar solo at the end to add it on too. So goodbye and good night, motherfuckers, they say. Uh, so a rating for this one, I would give this album an 8.5. So all you high energy hard rockers and rock and rollers out there, you should uh, check this one out. Well worth your money. A little song by a program from Kentucky. A little song, the state anthem. It is called Bill Billy Blues. There we go. <laughs> Daddy, he grew some weed. Need a way to pay it out when you got some. 
to the second of our double live albums in the 2020s and it's Vardis 100 miles per hour at the 100 club you can see there um, so uh, obviously it was recorded at the 100 club in uh, in London uh, London England in March of 2020 so really strong packaging on this one if you look at the front cover uh, of course it's mimicking the debut uh, live album uh, that the band put out uh, in the 80s during the new wave of British heavy metal heyday um, and the back has uh, uh, a shot of the band and the names of the songs that's okay but then look at this they got 50 different uh, shots of the band live in action and then on top of that, the uh, inner sleeves each have different uh, pictures of the band uh, live. And I uh, really like this one here where they uh, juxtapose the band live with uh, the guys in their youth uh, as well. So that's kind of cool. So anyway, uh, I, I would say this is the best packaging of the four albums that we had there. Um, so... Onto the music, and there are a few issues, unfortunately, with this one. Uh, the biggest issue is track selection here. Major, major disappointment. Uh, so there's 21 songs covered, uh, of which 11 are from is the complete uh, rerun through of the debut album, which was live in the first place. So why we need live versions of live songs previ uh, done previously, uh, I don't understand. Um, you know, one or two or three even uh, I can accept or one per side, uh, but to do the whole album, uh, uh, incredulous. Secondly, uh, even worse in my mind, uh, is that the band's best studio album, uh, The World's Insane, only gets one track. <laughs> you got a double live here and people uh, and myself included i would love i would prefer to have the world's insane done completely uh live and then one or two or three of the uh debuts thrown in that would have been like mind-blowing but no only one song from the world's insane and then their second best album uh studio album quo vardis only gets one and a half tracks uh. Uh, so big huge huge mistake here uh, and then further the tracks from the later albums are good but they're clearly not as strong as uh, as the, the uh, as the initial stuff the initial stuff was metal boogie whereas the more recent stuff uh, comes across more as rock and roll uh, so just not a, as heavy not as much a, of a punch to the gut secondly uh, a major no-no in live albums, in my opinion, uh, is that uh, there's breaks between tracks, so you fade in and out, rather than a concert experience. You have this song, and then it goes blank, and then you start up again. Uh, dumb. Uh, third, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to keep on going on here, but I want to be truthful, uh, even though I love this band. Uh, additionally, there's something annoying about Zodiac's vocals here. He's just a little bit yelpy, um, you know, uh, missing a little bit of the roar of old. The strengths, though, I would say is strong production here uh, in that the bottom end especially comes through the mix, uh, inviting you to turn up the subwoofer. Uh, secondly, Zodiac clearly still is a, uh, a great guitarist, uh, ha hasn't lost his chops there. Um, and thirdly, it, it's just uh, a joy to hear that the band is still alive. Uh, I'd love to see them in, in my native Canada here. I would uh, go and headbang uh, my head off if, if they were to come. So rating time, it's a tough one in that, you know, I'm glad to have this in my collection. Uh, but in reality, am I really going to play this that often? I, I have to be honest here and say uh, no. Uh, in that um, the debut uh, live album has superior versions of it, so that takes half of this album out of the equation, and then they didn't do enough of their best uh, studio stuff. So really disappointing. It, it could have been a great double live album. Um, because of that, I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. <laughs> Walk. 
of our four double live albums in the 2020s that will be coming is from our, the almighty razor called live osaka psycho or psycho not sure <laughs> you can see the band here uh so it's one shot over the two sides uh and it has the song listings here and uh in the middle you can see that uh there are uh numerous numerous uh, band picks here live and band and then there's details uh, in the middle so good packaging there so side one here uh immediately uh you just sit there and shake your head at how good this uh, canadian unit is and why it's uh, many a punter's favorite thrash band mine included uh listen to this track listening just for the side one <laughs> instant death iron hammer Violent Restitution, Tear Me to Pieces, and Parasite. <laughs> wow! Uh, speed Thrash uh, Perfection there. And uh, talking about perfection, the, the sound quality on this is, is, is amazing as well. Uh, all the instruments are clearly discernible, and then the rabid fan response is, is just the trade-off energy between the two. It is caught perfectly here. Uh, I, I would have loved to be there, that's for sure, on this gig. Uh, so onward the bad the the lads go for three more sides uh, unrelenting catchy speed metal uh, that covers tracks from both the sheepdog era as well as the uh, Bob Reed uh, eras pure pummeling bliss so from a judgment perspective my only complaint is that uh, the exclusion of at least one track from each of custom killing and decibels uh, it would have been very, very cool to hear Going Under and The Game, for example, in a live environment. Otherwise, this really is is perfection. Uh, so much so that it, I have to say, it is my favorite uh, double live thrash album in my collection already. Uh, just amazing. I give this a 9 out of 10. metal we change our gears here into southern rock and we're specifically talking about live up in flames by hogjaw uh, so many of you I, i'm sure are scratching your heads uh, saying who the hell are Ho hogjaw uh, for those not in know uh, this band hogjaw is the best current uh, southern rock band um, on the boards today just uh, amazing stuff um, they have six uh, uh, studio albums to their name, six, of which uh, the last three I rate perfect 10 out of 10s. Uh, so you know they have a wealth of material to choose from uh, to fill a double live record. Uh, so this gig is, uh, uh, the recording is taken from a 2019 concert supporting uh, their then new Way Down Yonder opus. Uh, but the, uh, the, but the live show wasn't released in vinyl format until this year. Uh, last year, sorry. 
Uh, so packaging wise, you get the obligatory live shot on front. Cool. And the back, you just have uh, basically the song titles. And in the middle uh, is band shots and live shots, just what you'd expect again. Good stuff. Um, so the first in, uh, in, uh, impression uh, when, you, uh, when you take this in is sound quality is uh, perfect, clear and crisp uh, that takes you off the couch into the club setting where this was recorded. Uh, great stuff. Uh, secondly, I've, I haven't seen the band live. I hadn't had the opportunity to see them live. And the uh, videos on YouTube are pretty grainy, so it's hard to know whether they could pull this stuff off live. And this uh, confirms that, uh, yeah, they have the chops to be able uh, to pull their high-quality material off in a, in a live setting. Uh, and especially the capabilities of all three of their lead singers three <laughs> lead singers uh, each with their own unique warble uh, so great to hear that and uh, third thing that comes to mind listening to this is just how underrated this band is you know track after track of great so songs presented in a continuous line as if the band saying what the hell else do we got to do to catch your attention it's it's uh, amazing so uh, rating time now uh, for this baby um, I would put this as an 8.5, which puts it on par with uh, Molly Hatchet's Double Trouble Live, um, but slightly below Blackfoot's Highway Song Live. Enjoy. This is a song about going back into the swamplands. There you have uh, four double live vinyl albums that have been issued in the 2020s that uh, we think are worthy of discussion. If there are any others out there, uh, please write down below so people can check them out. Remember to check in every Monday for our new release Mondays. Uh, Tuesdays are in 40 minutes curated sets. Uh, then we have Wednesdays, our written album and live reviews. And Thursdays, our top tens, best ofs, uh, album reviews like uh, today. And you can find all that at our website, www.themightydecibel.com. Have a great one, eh?